Hello everyone. Welcome back to Crockett Creek Brewery. Thank you for joining me tonight. Tonight is our third installment of our Viking series. Tonight we're going to be making rosemary black pepper meat, or as I like to call it, the Green Dragon. Now, the Green Dragon is a Welsh meat, and it's also a methaglin which means it is herbed and spiced. So, a quick history of green dragon meat. I found this recipe online after a ton of digging when I first got into home brewing. It is a recipe that I found from Wales in a cookbook written in Latin. I had to translate the names, the ingredients, and the amounts out of Latin. And come to find out, it is a spiced methaglin mead, which I nicknamed the Green Dragon because it's from Wales. Now, if you've seen my other video on rosemary black pepper mead, this is the exact same recipe. So you can either watch that one I also wanted to post this on my Viking series because it is by far one of the oldest recipes I have in my arsenal of recipes, and it's one of the best. It has never failed me. I've never had a bad batch of this. It has always turned out remarkable, and it's even turned out good green. So take that as you will. This is a wonderful recipe and a good recipe to try if you're not used to using or used to making methaglins. So let me quickly go over what we're going to use. I have here three pounds and two ounces of honey. This is Desert Creek honey, which is a local honey, wildflower honey here in Texas. I also have three six inch sprigs of rosemary. Now these have been frozen. These have been preserved, if you would, in the freezer for quite some time. I took these off of uh, a rosemary bush growing at my parents' house. I'm using three because it's not exactly fresh. You can see they're a little brown but they're not anywhere near dead. They're still very much alive, just a little darker. So I wanted to add an extra little one in there just to make it a little stronger because they're not near as fresh as they used to be. I'm also gonna be using one cup of black tea. This is not in my original recipe. However, I used it in the other meads in my Viking series because it adds extra tannin and extra body to the mead and I wanted to see what this mead would taste like with that extra tannin and body. I have made a bunch of green dragon mead throughout my time as a home brewer but I've never made it with black tea so that's what we're going to try tonight. I also have one gallon of water now some of it's missing, and the part that's missing is in my glass for the black tea. That's only there for my own measurements. We're probably not going to use only about two-thirds or three-quarters of a gallon because we have the volume of honey taking up space in our carboy. That's only there for my own measurements and sanity. We're also going to be using two teaspoons of black peppercorns. Now this started out tonight as whole black peppercorns. I crushed these with a mallet. These are coarse crushed black peppercorns. If you can grind them coarsely and fresh, those are the best to use. They will imbue the most flavor into this methagol. 
Now, I also don't have them out again tonight, and I apologize for it. I don't have my raisins. I'm going to add them off camera again, I'm afraid. But we are going to be using 30 raisins in there to add a little bit of yeast nutrient. Mostly it's there from mouthfeel and body and a little bit of sugar for our must. So let's go ahead and get started with making our green dragon mead. We have here our primary fermentation vessel, a one gallon carboy. I also have here my funnel, which has been drying. Let's go ahead and add in our honey, three pounds and two ounces. I'll put the entire recipe down below in the description if anybody wants to read it. This honey was warmed up, but it's still a little thick, so this might take a little bit of time. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we have all of our honey added. What we want to go ahead and do is rinse these out and get all of the honey out of our jars. We are going to use some of our one gallon batch. Again, honey is expensive, and we do not want to waste any bit of it. This will also help us rinse out our funnel and continue to get a lot more of that honey goodness out of there. You're never going to get all of it. At least you can get most of it. There we go. Now my fingers are a bit sticky, let me rinse them off real quick. It also gives me a chance to get my hydrometer drying. Now before we go any further, I want to go ahead and add my black tea. Trying not to spill it. There we go. We're also going to add our black pepper. I'm going to remove the funnel for this one because I don't want it to stick to the sides of the funnel. It's still coated in a little bit of honey. So I have it here in a little pill bag. It makes it easy to pour. I always have to get the last little bit out.
this black pepper adds a wonderful spice to this methicillin. And if you've never tried it, I recommend that you do. This is a flavor unlike anything you've probably ever tried. The floral, the aromatic notes of the rosemary come through at the front, but in the back of your throat and on the tip of your tongue, you get that spice of the black pepper. It's absolutely wonderful. This is one of my favorite meats to make. And again, it's one of the oldest meats that I have and the closest thing we can associate with the Viking occupation of England in 1066. This is a very, very old recipe. I absolutely love it. So right now we're gonna add the rest of our water, or at least a little bit of it, so we can shake it up. Okay, that's about two thirds of a gallon. Let's go ahead and shake this up. Shake it up nice and vigorously. We want to get all that honey dissolved. We want to add a lot of oxygen to this must. I will say, when it comes to methaglins, they do take a little bit of time to ferment, to start to ferment, I should say. That's because the word methaglin means honey medicine, if I'm translating that right. So this was originally a brew or a type of brew that was used to make medicine in the Middle Ages during the occupation of the Vikings. And a lot of the spices, a lot of the herbs you add to this are antiseptic, which means they fight off bacteria. And yeast is, of course, a bacteria. So your yeast will be in battle with the herbs and spices you add to your methylene which takes it a little while to get started. It took twice as long for my Yule mead to start as it did for my cherry mead, my Viking's blood. I wasn't sure if my Yule mead would ever get started, but it did. It just took a little bit longer because all the spices I added to it were fighting against the yeast. So we're going to let this sit for a minute, see if we have any more of the honey separate from our water. I'm actually going to go ahead and add my three sprigs of rosemary. The fresher you can find it, the better. I actually collect a lot of my rosemary from my garden or my parents' garden. And if I have any left over, I'll freeze it. And it'll stay frozen for a long period of time. But it's still perfectly good when it comes out. So we're going to let this sit for a second. I will see you on the other side. Alright, so we've gone ahead and let this sit for quite a while. It's still quite foamy on the top. But that's okay. We're going to shake it up one more time, and then we're going to go ahead and add our water to it. Okay, 
Let's go ahead and add a little bit more water to it. Now, since it's so foamy, I'm afraid we're going to have to let this sit for a long time. So, as soon as it calms down, you'll see me again. Okay, so we've let this sit for another long time. And it's still very foamy, but we still have a few more ingredients to add, so we're going to act very carefully. I have over here my yeast. This is actually hydrating in a little bit of water. This is Lauvin K1V 1116 Champagne Yeast. Now we've added enough honey to make this a 15% ABV mead. So we're gonna go ahead and add our yeast. And we're gonna add a little bit of water to that. It's already foaming over quite a bit. Look at that. We're foaming over. That's a sticky mess. So unfortunately, this is gonna be a very long and tedious process. So, I'm sorry, but I'll see you in a bit. All right, everyone. So the foam has not gone down by much. As you can see here, it's still pushing up into the neck of our carboy. We have waited long enough. We're going to go ahead and see if we can get a hydrometer reading out of this and try and go down below the foam. Okay, there we go. Okay. So we have a specific gravity of 1.115, which is exactly what we are going for. That is a potential ABV of 15%. So let's gently, and I mean gently, try to pour this back in where we don't make a mess. And if we, tr if we can, try to get some of the foam out of this. There we go. These are going to go into our sanitizer liquid. Okay, so now that we know our original gravity. Let me grab my pen. Here we go. I have a label right here.
And before I forget, let me grab my raisins. I'll be right back. So here we have our package of raisins. For all my other meads in my Viking series, I have forgotten to add these on camera. I went ahead and remembered and added them off camera. Today, I didn't forget. We're going to add 30 of these. So I may fast forward through this. We go. 30 raisins added on camera. I'm not going to shake this up again, but I'm going to give it a nice swirl. There we go. I'm going to add my airlock full of sanitizer liquid. And add my label. We are reading negative pressure. So there we go. So I apologize if this was a tad bit longer of a video than you're used to as far as my tutorials go. This foamed up a lot more than I've ever seen it foam up. It may have been the addition of the black tea, which was a little bit different of a temperature, a little bit higher temperature. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of rosemary poking up through the top right here. We're gonna give this a swirl for the next yeah, three days or so. And this is gonna sit for about 14 days, about two weeks before we rack it and let it continue to ferment. I wanna rack it after 14 days to get the rosemary out of there. So, Thank you for joining me today for, our, for my third Viking series mead, Green Dragon Mead. We will see you on the next one. Bye now.